Hi, welcome back to Geometry. Today we're going to do some notes on ratios and proportions, section 7.1. Today in class you did an activity where you discovered some things about shapes that are similar and we used proportions today in class. So let's take some notes on it just so we're all on the same page. Our objective in this lesson is to write ratios and solve proportions. It's essential that you understand you can write a ratio to compare two quantities, so something to something else. A ratio is a comparison of two quantities of the same kind. So for example, if you're going to do um, objects, it's object to object, or person to person, or student to student. It has to be identical dimensions. So if you're going to express a ratio of measurement, you would have to express inches to inches, feet to feet, centimeters to centimeters, so on and so forth. So it's expressed as a quantity to another quantity, A to B, or A dot dot B, or you can write it as a fraction, where it's A over B. That's three ways to write a ratio. And B cannot equal zero. So example one, writing a ratio. Jack and Lily were rolling matchbox cars on the kitchen floor. Jack's car rolled three yards, and Lily's rolled 22 inches. Write a ratio of Jack's roll to Lily's roll. Well, the first thing you should notice here is that we're comparing yards to inches. You can't do that, so we'll need to convert them all to the same thing. There are three feet in a yard, so how many inches are in three yards? So there are nine feet in three yards, and because there's 12 inches per foot, that means there's 108 inches in three yards. So 108 inches is three yards. And again, that's because there's three feet in a yard and 12 inches in a foot. So the ratio here would be 108 inches to 22 inches. Or you could say 108 to 22 or 108 over 22. So we can reduce this. These have a, a common factor of 2. So this ratio of Jack's roll to Lily's roll would end up being 54 to 11 inches. For every 54 inches he rolled, hers rolled 11. So let's look at another example. The ratio of boys to girls in the class is 2 to 3. If there are a total of 25 students in class, how many boys are there? Well, the ratio doesn't mean that there are two boys and three girls. It means the ratio for every two boys, there are three girls. So in order for us to find out, this means two parts boy, three parts girl. So two, we don't know how many are in a part, parts boys, plus three parts girls is a total of 25. So combining like terms, 5x is 25, so x is 5. So every part of the 2 to 3 means that there are 5 students in each part. So if it's 2 to 3, if it's 2 to 3, then it means that there's 10 boys and 15 girls for a total of 25 students. An extended ratio compares three or more numbers. In the extended ratio A to B to C, the ratio of the first two numbers is A to B, the ratio of the last two numbers is B to C, and the ratio of the first and the last is A to C. So let's use an extended ratio here. The lengths of the side lengths of our triangle are the extended ratio 3 to 5 to 6. The perimeter of the triangle is 98 inches. What's the length of the longest side? Well, the longest side here would be this one, 6x. If the perimeter around the entire triangle is 98 inches, how do we find out what each part is? Well, the 3 to 5 to 6 means 3 parts of the whole are this side, 5 parts of the whole are this side, and 6 parts of the whole are this side. So we can add them together. 3x and 5x and 6x equals the total of 98 inches. So by combining our like terms, we're going to get that 14x is equal to 98, and therefore x is equal to 7. Well, 
Now we want to know what's the length of the longest side. So the length of this side, it's 6x's, and if x is 7, then this side here is 42 inches. The second thing that it's essential you understand is that if two ratios are equivalent, then you can write an equation stating that the ratios are equal. You can use the cross product property to find the value of the variable. An equation that states that two ratios are equal is called a proportion. So when you have two equivalent fractions or two equivalent ratios, another name for a fraction is a ratio, you can use the cross product property. The top number times the bottom number, in this example 2 times 6, those are known as the extremes. And the bottom of the first, the denominator of the first times the numerator of the second, those are called the means. You learned about those last year in Algebra 1. They're vocab words that you should be familiar with. Um, so write this down, take note. In a proportion, the product of the extremes equals the product of the means. So when you cross multiply, you should get equivalent products. And the bottoms can never equal zero because those would be undefined then. So if A over B equals C over D, where B and D are not zero, then when you multiply A times D and B times C, you should get the same product. An example, 2 over 3 is equal to 4 over 6. Isn't that true? Doesn't 4, 6 reduce to 2 thirds? So when you cross multiply 2 times 6, it's equal to 3 times 4 because 12 equals 12. So let's solve a proportion using the cross product property. Again, we want to multiply 3 times 7, 27 is 81. And when we say x times x, we're going to get x squared. How do you undo squared? Yep, square root. So we want to say the square root of 81 is equal to x. Square root of 81, 9 is x. And isn't that true? If you plugged it in, 27 over 9 is equal to 9 over 3. Both are equal to 3 if you reduce them. Another example, we're going to use the cross product property here to solve for y. When you multiply, we're saying 3 times y plus 4 is equal to 9 times y. In this situation, when there's an expression on top, you need to use the distributive property. So we want to distribute. 3 times y and 3 times 4 is equal to 9y. Use the subtraction property to get that 12 is equal to 6y because I subtracted 3y from both sides. And then use the division property to get that y is equal to 2. 2 is y, y is 2. So when there's an expression such as y plus 4, you need to use the distributive property. So here's a key concept. It's a property of proportions. If a, b, c, and d do not equal 0, then you can write the reciprocal of each ratio, meaning you can flip them. You can switch them around. And in each ratio, add the denominator to the numerator. So take a minute and fill in your note template. And then we're going to do an example of each one. So writing equivalent proportions. In the diagram, AB equals 3 fourths. So AB, that's this side, is equal to 3 fourths. So if we flip it and it becomes the reciprocal, B over A, it would be equal to, we want to flip the second one. 4 over 3. For example, B. If we had used the cross product property, we would have said 4A. So then on the other side of this equation should go 3B. 
Let's take a look at C. If the second ratio is B over 4, what do you think the first ratio would be? The second ratio is B over 4, so the first ratio should be A over 3. And then here's an example of that last property. If you add the bottom to the top, so the initial proportion was A over B equals 3 over 4. Well, if I add the denominator to the numerator and have A plus B over B, then what would I have in the second half of our proportion? Well, I would add 4 to 3. 4 plus 3 is 7 over 4. Be ready for your uh, notes quiz tomorrow.